All right, folks, I wasn't planning on doing a video tonight, but yet here we are. The reason being is that Yesu has announced a new radio, and I was able to get some information on it. So I went to this Gigaparts website, and you can see that this is called the Yesu FTM310D. There's also an FTM310D ASP that is being released at the same time. These radios aren't available yet, but should be available soon. Now I was able to gather a list of information from scouring the internet and looking in every the darkest corners. And uh, I speculation free today. So I want to talk a little bit about these radios and some of the features that they have. Just quickly, we're going to scroll down here and you can see some information. I'll include a link to this below because I'm a nice guy and I help everybody out like that. But here you can see some stuff that they put in here, some of the key features. I've got a long list uh, in my notes, so I'm not going to read this stuff. I'm going to go over my list because I think it's a little bit more detailed. But it has all the general stuff that you would expect. Now, this radio is dual band. It means it does VHF and UHF, 2 meters, 70 centimeters. It has wide band receive coverage from 108 megahertz to, I don't know, I have to check my notes. The other thing it does is it does system fusion, YSF or C4FM, which is pretty cool. All right, well, let me take a look at my notes, and then uh, we can see what's going on there. All right, I'm an old man, and to make sure that I can read these things, all right, I'm going to put on my splaining glasses just like this. Now, I know I'm a handsome devil when I got these things on, but I'm going to need them to read my notes. So uh, let's talk a little bit about it. It is the mobile transceiver. It has a detachable control head. And on this control head, there are two mounting options or two plug-in options for your microphone. You have the side of the, of the head, and then on the bottom, there's a port there. So you can plug it in for whichever mounting option that you're going to want to use. Uh, it, what it does is it offers true dual band reception, meaning that you can listen on the primary or the, the main and then the sub band at the same time. It says dual band, so I'm assuming one's got to be on, uh, well, it says they could be UHF, VHF, 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 UHF, UHF, or UHF, VHF, or the other way around. So you should be okay there. Uh, what it does is up to 55 watts out, and the ASP variant is identical in core radio specifications, except for it includes the audio digital signal processor factory installed from Yesu. Now you can buy the non-ASP version and then you can add the module yourself later at a cost of $60. It's around $50 extra to get the uh, system upgrade automatically from Yesu, or you can do it yourself for $60 at a later date should you see that you need it. But our frequency coverage for transmit is going to be from 144 to 148 in the U.S. or international. In the European Union, it's 144 to 146. For UHF, it is 430 to 450 in the U.S., and then the EU region is 430 to 440. So for the wide, bay, wide, <laughs> wide range continuous coverage receive, it's from 108 to 550 megahertz. It's going to include um, 108 to 137 airband. It's going to include uh, 137 to 174 uh, megahertz, which is going to include your ham band, and then it goes all the way up to 550 that we talked about. And you can do this on both the main and the sub receivers. The radio does have two independent receivers. Channel steps are all the normal tuning steps that you would think of. Five, six and a quarter. 8.33. That's for airband. 10, 12 and a half, 15, 20, 25 and 50 or even 100 kilohertz. And that's all your standard spacing. Uh, let's see what else we have down here. We talked about FM. It does FM analog voice and C4 FM digital voice. It has automatic mode select. They call this AMS in the Yesu radios, and it's where your radio will hear signals and determine if it is FM or C4 FM and automatically adjust for that signal. <clears throat> dual uh, digital monitor. So it has uh, what they call true dual receive design with two independent receivers. It means the radio can receive two signals simultaneously and even decode two C4 FM signals at the same time. The output power is up to 55 watts. Uh, it is 50 on VHF, 55. I'm sorry, it's 55 on VHF and 50 on UHF. And it has three power settings. So high is 50, 55, medium is 20, and then low is 5 watts of output. And it does have a heavy-duty heat sink and a fan to deal with cooling in case this thing gets a little bit hot. So for the receiver type, it is a double conversion super heterodyne design, which is pretty slick uh, for both, both the main and the sub receivers. Uh, the first IF range is 
is 56 megahertz, 56.75. Uh, for the main and for the sub, it's 55.85. And then the second IF is 450 kilohertz, which helps with image rejection and selectivity. I'm sorry, sensitivity. Let's see what we got over here. It does have the Super DX mode, which is for weak signal. Super DX mode can be engaged with... Uh, it would increases your RF amplifier gain to boost sensitivity. You can pull out the weak signals. Uh, both rate, both models, the FTM 310D and the 310D ASP have the Super DX mode. Let's see, for audio and speaker system, it has the AESS dual speakers, the acoustic enhanced speaker systems. It's a combination of a front-facing speaker in the control head and internal speaker in the radio chassis used together for richer audio. Each speaker outputs 3 watts, totaling 6 watts of audio output for loud and clear sound, even in noisy vehicles. Uh, the front panel houses a 3-watt speaker aimed towards the operator, while the main unit's 3 speaker adds depth. Let's see, the, there's some more stuff about the speakers, but I don't think we need that. It says the FTM310's audio is engineered for clarity in digital mode. The C4 FM voice quality is crisp and high fidelity thanks to its low bit error rate and strong signal correction. All right, we're going through this stuff pretty fast. It has a high resolution display. It features a full dot matrix LCD display on the control head. Uh, it, can, it can span 47 channels. It can be visible on the display. Uh, we talked about the dual band uh, interface and it has a tuning knob, volume knob, and squelch knob for each of your VFOs, the, the main and the sub. For the user interface, it does have the customized function list and this is where you can program in the menu options that you use most often. And the microphone does have DTMF capabilities. Now, it doesn't give an exact number of the memory channels that it stores. The 500 DR is 999. Um, this is, I guess I said speculation free. We're speculating over a thousand memories on this thing. It also has the primary memory group function, which is quick access to important channels. You can store up to five channels in VFO, VFO or memory frequencies. All right, it has the memory auto grouping where it sorts, it automatically sorts memory channels by band for easy navigation. And uh, it has scan and APRS memory. It has a dedicated APRS message and log memories for storing incoming packets, messages, and coordinates. So it does have a built-in GPS and it does do APRS and it has digital connectivity options. So the built-in GPS is a 66 channel GPS receiver integrated into the control head. Um, it provides accurate location, altitude, and time information for APRS and other use cases. In C4FM group monitor mode, the radio can display the distance and direction of other stations. For APS functionality, it supports 1,200 and 9,600 BPS APRS data communication for real-time packet reporting. It enables sending and receiving of APRS position beacon, status messages, weather, telemetry data, and the FT-10 uh, can display APRS station icons, and it offers an APRS station list. I'm not a nerd, so I don't really know much about APRS. It does support Wires X. I don't really know many people who use that, but it supports it. So if you're a user of Wire X, uh, that's good for you. And it has Bluetooth. The radio is Bluetooth capable for hands-free operation, but with an optional BU5 Bluetooth module, you need to install that to enable it. External data interface. So it has a rear data jack. And when they say data, they make it all capital, capital D-A-T-A. -A. Um, six pin mini din and is for integrating tncs and other devices it also has a usb port for firmware updates and computer programming it also has a micro sd card slot as well for backing up memory channels saving aprs logs and updating firmware <clears throat> the microphone and control interface we talked about it being uh, dtm fm it has dual jacks we talked about that the detachable control head we talked about that and we talked a little bit about front panel controls i'm not going to go over all of that kind of stuff Let's see, it weighs about 3.09 pounds. Uh, it requires 13.8 volts DC nominal, and it can operate anywhere from 11 to 15 volts. Current drain approximately half an amp on receive, no signal squelched, and up to 11 amps on full transmit power, 25 watts. 
uh, I'm sorry, full power 50 or 55 watts. At 25 watts, it draws lower around 5 to 6 amps. At 5 watts, it only draws 3 amps. Talked about the fan. We talked about the heat sink. It has thermal protection. And it says it senses, if it senses it being too hot, it will automatically step down power or cycle to protect itself. So the differences between the FTM 310D and 310D ASP is the ASP module inclusion. The ASP module comes with the audio signal processor pre-installed from the factory. We talked a little bit about that. Um, what the ASP does is essentially a digital audio noise reduction and filtering feature particularly useful in analog FM mode. When you activate ASP on weak or noisy FM signals, the radio digitally processes the incoming audio to separate voice from the noise, instantly improving clarity. It can make the difference between a barely readable and comfortably copyable audio. The ASP works hand-in-hand -hand with the Super DX mode. Super DX mode boosts the RF gain to pull in the weak signal, and then ASP cleans it up uh, and gets rid of all the noise. That does sound pretty cool. It has ASP auto and manual modes. There are two usage modes. ASP audio mode you can set and forget. The radio will automatically act ASP whenever a weak signal is detected. In manual mode, the operator can toggle the Super D and Super DX on and off as needed by pressing the SDX key. Let's see. And I think that's it for the differences. And that's going to cover it. That's everything I got on this radio. So anyhow, when they come out, if you want one, get one.